Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. 
The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your whole household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Revelation to John. At the end of the visions, I, John, heard these words. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone hear who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Let not our hearts go numb, writes Peggy Noonan in her latest Wall Street Journal column. Let not our hearts go numb. We're out of words because we're out of thoughts because we said them all and spent them all after Columbine and Sandy Hook and Parkland. The shock was the lack of shock you felt when you heard of yet another mass shooting, she continues. In the last two to ten days, we have awakened to news of two more gun massacres one in Robb Elementary School in Texas, the other in a Buffalo supermarket. When we're not feeling numb, some of us are feeling outrage and anger, others hopelessness and helplessness as day after day, year after year, nothing changes. We try to imagine the unbearable pain and shattered lives of the loved ones left behind, and we can't. It's beyond our ability even to process. So if we're being honest, the admonition from Peggy Noonan strikes a chord somewhere deep within us to let not our hearts go numb. The gunning down of 19 innocent school children and two teachers in Texas leaves us without words in this senseless act of violence with no seeming motivation. All other mass shootings of Latinos in America have been labeled as hate crimes, but not this one, as the shooter himself was Latino. 
So is the root cause of such an unthinkable act mental illness, self-hatred, the ability of the 18-year-old shooter to legally buy an AR-15 rifle on his 18th birthday, all of the above? We don't know. We don't know. In contrast, we do know that the Buffalo massacre of 10 African Americans while shopping for groceries is a hate crime, with a white supremacist symbol and racist slurs clearly marked on the shooter's assault rifle. In the last six years alone in America, there have been gun massacres labeled as hate crimes against blacks, Asians, Latinos, gays, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, just in the last six years. It has been written that violence comes in many different forms, but hate has the same DNA wherever you see it, whether in the form of white supremacy, religious persecution, or genocide. It is the belief that another group is an existential threat to you and your community that justifies unspeakable acts of violence. Let not our hearts go numb as we grapple with yet another mass shooting, one labeled as a hate crime, and as we try to wrap our minds around the 13th mass school shooting in America, which unbelievably was the 274th mass shooting in our country since they started keeping records in 1961. 200 and 74th. The sheer volume can engender a dangerous complacency within us. So what are we to do? What are we to do? Well, we can do what religious people, faithful people throughout the centuries have done when they didn't know where to turn, what to feel, or how to respond, we can turn to Scripture. We have the words of Jesus who knew the heart of humankind. He knew that some people based their life on fear rather than love. He knew there were times when hate would win out over love as he discovered only too well. So near the end of his life in the Gospel of John in our reading this morning, he says this prayer on behalf of his disciples to God. He prays, God, the glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one. So let's unpack that. Jesus' prayer is a roadmap for how to live together in love rather than hatred, acceptance rather than suspicion, health rather than dis-ease. It is a guide for how to avoid the tragic deaths of innocent school children and unsuspecting grocery shoppers and more. But the root of such senseless violence is often a severe sense of isolation, of not being able to identify in any way as part of the larger human family. Underlying this is a tragic, overriding sense of alienation and, yes, hatred for that human family and for the self. Jesus' I and them and you and me language can be confusing, but 
his message within those words is this. He's telling the disciples and he's telling us now and forever, know that you are one, just as God and I are one, because I live in you. And therefore, God lives in you. That's his message to the disciples in our reading this morning. And it's his message to you and to me. So God lives within you and you and the person next door and the person a thousand miles away and the person who looks like you and then the person who does not look like you and the person who agrees with you and the person who does not. In black and white, young and old, people of all faith traditions, in rich and poor, gay and straight, male and female, God lives in us all. Imagine what our world would be like if we could only live with this understanding in our hearts, this belief that we are indeed all one. Above the dormitory at Good Shepherd Home in Cameroon, West Africa, where I've done a lot of work, are those very words, may we all be one. And it's in a colorful mural above the door of a picture of Jesus surrounded by five children of different Cameroonian tribes. There are over 215 different tribes in Cameroon, and it has caused a lot of conflict throughout their history. Like Jesus, Sister Jane saw this as a potential problem and long ago decided to do what she could in her little corner of the world. In Good Shepherd Home, children of different tribes are not only friends, they're brothers and sisters. They not only like each other, they love each other, for they have grown up side by side. Just as Sister Jane has taken action in her world, what might we do in ours? That's where I go with every gospel reading. Am I called a change because of what I've just heard? So how? Is there an act I meant to undertake? As an alternative response to numbness, hopelessness, or anger, perhaps I'm called to reach out for meaningful conversation with persons of different race or religion. Perhaps I'm called to email my elected representatives in Washington about universal background checks or other gun-related issues. Perhaps I'm called to volunteer or give to a local mental health organization. The answer will be different for each one of us, but there is an alternative readily available to us. A popular maxim says it best, the only failure is not to try. The only failure. So I like to start small. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, like this could just be so overwhelming that we do nothing. We numb out, we feel nothing, and we go on until we get the next news report. So I suggest maybe, at least this works for me, start small. Start with ourselves. We just celebrated Mother's Day, and we're getting ready to celebrate Father's Day. Is there any misunderstanding between you and your mother or father? Or between you and your own children? Sometime in our lives, for most of us, there is. Might this be the year to pick up the phone and be the first person to reach out or to sit down and talk things out, helping to bring about peace within our own family? Might this be Jesus' message to you this morning? Remember, 
we are all one, particularly those within our own family. Or looking at the bigger picture, do you feel called perhaps to take a look at some of the racial issues that exist right here in Palm Beach County? Are you called to learn more about that, to volunteer at St. George's, to get involved in some way? Or is there some way God wants us to use our gifts to speak out in, against white supremacy or in favor of more restrictive gun laws? Could that be God's word for you this morning? The response that our Creator yearns for from each one of us is different because we're all different. We don't all have the same call, not in this area or any other. But please, never doubt that God looks to each one of us to right the wrongs that exist in our world today. Hear these words attributed to St. Saint Teresa of Avila. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God does not change. Patience achieves everything. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. And then come these words that I've never forgotten since the first time I heard them. Christ has no body now on earth but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ must look out onto the world. Yours are the feet with which he goes about doing good. Let not your hearts go numb. Your hearts, your hands, your feet, your voice can help bring about peace within your own family and can change the headlines of tomorrow. Yours. Let us stand and proclaim our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one, as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord For the mission of the church, that is faithful witness, it may preach to the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For Elaine, Jody, Kathleen, Paul, Stephanie, Ed, Virginia, and Susie, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, For all who have died in the community of our church, especially Caroline, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. We especially remember this weekend those who gave ultimate sacrifice. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace to all of you, a warm welcome. Uh, Please be seated. And as I welcome you, if you're visiting with us, we're so glad to welcome you to Bethesda by the Sea. There are newcomer cards in the pew before you. If you are visiting and you're in in town, we'd love to receive one from you. Uh, We'd love to be in touch with you about our life and mission and ministries. There are people in the back who have blue ribbons. They're called ambassadors. 
uh, smiling faces to say hello and also to give you any information that you'd like to receive about our church and if you are visiting a bouquet uh, to say welcome from our flower guild next sunday is the day of pentecost there's a couple things going on first is you're invited to wear wear red if you'd like that's an old church tradition uh, it's a great tradition to be together in unity as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Services are still at 8 and 10 all the way through the summer until early fall. We'll let you know. It'll be actually the 18th of September when we'll go back, but we'll let you know those things. Please be up on the things of our church by way of the happenings. Take that home with you, please, as a little newsletter about upcoming events, opportunities, even during the summer. As Elizabeth said, uh, time now for us to put our lives to work for the good of the whole. And um, as we remember those who offered themselves in service to our country, we also remember those in Ukraine, and we also remember those who are victims of shootings during the last couple of weeks. I can't imagine anything harder than to have your baby murdered in a school. Please remember those who are heart sick this week in um, Uvalde, Texas. I also remember those um, who we have also lost in service to our country. Uh, the shortstop and the second baseman of my high school baseball team were killed in Vietnam. Uh, when I was a senior playing on that team, we heard word Peter Mitch and Jim Adams were both killed the same week in Vietnam. I remember them every single year of uh, this weekend, and you have people also who you remember uh, who gave their life for our country, and it's, um, it's bla emblazoned in our memory. Next week also, on a happier note, there's a picnic following the 10 o'clock service Mission Barbecue, the best barbecue in the county, uh, is going to be here next week. So join us, Red Pentecost. The choir will be singing, this choir will be singing for the last time this season. Then our summer choir will begin after that on Trinity Sunday. So um, we'll look forward to next Sunday as a big occasion in the life of our church. Join us for coffee and nipples following this service. Now in the guild room, right through this door, or you can go around this way, um, in, off the Garth, in um, the first room here, uh, off to the right is the Guild Room. Uh, that's where coffee and lemonade and other nibbles are, and we invite you to join us following this service. Communion of both, both kinds now, bread and wine. If you're still nervous about the common cup, you may cross your arms across your chest, indicating you'd rather just receive bread. And we are serving bread at the lower rail in case you have difficulty with these steps down here at the chapel rail um, also. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. creator of all, your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to the land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his, to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming and glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with the Spirit's power, may be a people of hope justice and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship our God and Creator in voices of unending praise. 
Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.